All right, everyone. I like to be prompt, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start the webinar. I first want to welcome you to uh, Brilliant Bookings Boost Bottom Lines presented by LCT. I'm Lexi Tucker, assistant editor here at LCT Magazine, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Uh, I encourage you to ask questions during the webinar at any point in the chat box. Um, or you know, write them down on a sheet of paper because we'll try to address as many of them as possible after the initial presentation. Uh, our presenter today is Ms. Tammy Carlisle of Action Worldwide Chauffeur Services in Atlanta, Georgia. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and hand things off to Tammy. 36 months, we've doubled. Well, thank you so much, Lexi. Well, as you guys already know, I'm Tammy Carlisle, and I've been Vice President of Sales and Marketing for seven years for Action Worldwide Chauffeur Transportation. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary, and we're formerly known as Just Action Limousines. Clarence Carr started our company and deserves a little credit for trading in his sports car and buying his first Lincoln back in 1993. I think they asked me to help with this first webinar because over the past 36 months, we've doubled our fleet and we saw a gross profit increase of over 43%. So it's a privilege to be your guinea pig for the first LCT webinar. I feel so blessed and have such an esteemed audience today. Lexi and I intend to move through this presentation within approximately 15 to 20 minutes. As questions arise, please feel free to type them in. There is a dialogue box up and to your right. We will address each one in turn at the conclusion. For now, we have everyone muted for quality. Sit back, relax, and let's reach my goal of empowering each of you to earn an additional $5,000 a month minimum. Hey, but remember, if your goal is higher, the sky's the limit. So don't let anything I say hinder you making an extra couple million. Let's move on. Well, thank you so much, Lexi. Well, as you guys already know, I'm Tammy Carl. There goes our first technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk bottom line, because bottom line means different things to different people. So I certainly can't have such a lofty title like Brilliant Bookings Boost Your Bottom Line without addressing this. So throughout our presentation, your bottom line is this. It's your total revenue minus your expenses. So therefore, bottom line equals profit. You know, we each only have one opportunity to make an amazing and memorable first impression. To boost your bottom line, this is more important today than ever. We are inundated with so much information. How do we make ourselves different? Are we providing every avenue possible for potential clients to communicate with us? But more importantly, are we providing them every avenue to communicate with us on the level that's comfortable for them? So for those of us over 40, I want to pick up the phone and I want to talk to you. I want to know what kind of mood you're in. You know, I don't even care if you tell me you're at the grocery store. I just want to know that you're hearing me and that I'm communicating in such a way that I can get my needs across. But as that age range dips down to our millennials and even our teens, their preferred method of talking is not talking at all. It's texting. It's chatting. It's zip whip. It's third-party technologies like Yelp, Facebook, LinkedIn, and even Twitter. Please keep this in mind, but also remember that it's important to have these links available for every possible client. You know, we're going to need CSRs that understand the necessity of meeting this need and those of our clients to excel in our markets. And for the purpose of the rest of my presentation, when I mention CSR, in our office, the CSRs are our customer service representatives. And that's our name for both reservationist and dispatch because we're still small enough that they multitask. Let's begin with a call. We're gonna talk about how most phones are answered in my market at least. I'm sure you guys have no one like this in yours. And let's do a bad call to start. So bear with me while I cue this up. Um, is this the? Um, is this the limousine service? Yes, it is. How can I help you? Um, I need to get a price. Okay. Many people. When? What date? 
Um, I'm going to have two people, and it's August 13th. Okay, what time of the day? Where are we going to pick you up? Um, you're going to be picking me up in uh, Bluffton, South Carolina, and taking me back to Bluffton. Um, we, we're we looking for something to have dinner. How much would um, an hour be? Well, we only we have three hour minimum, so it'll be 250 bucks. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, and so now we're going to go to our next slide, which kind of goes into what a good call should sound like and a little bit better practices. Um, it is cut off a little bit at the beginning, so you guys bear with me, but um, I think you'll get the gist of how you might should be answering your phone with this one. And thank you, Kevin, for helping me with the bad call. He really doesn't answer his phones like that, you guys. Here's the good call. Hello, this is Tammy. How can I help you? Hi, Tammy. I wanted to check on getting a limousine. We would love to help you with that. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with today? My name is Pam. Hey, Pam, I hear your puppy in the back. I love yeah. dogs. Is this going to be for a special occasion, or is it going to be for an airport transfer? It's going to be a special occasion. It's my grandfather's 80th birthday. 80. How fabulous. I sure do miss my grandfather. What do you guys have in mind for his birthday? Is this going to be a daytime event or in the evening? It's going to be in the evening. Um, I think we're going to go to dinner. Okay. And what's your grandpa's favorite food? Have you guys got some places in mind already? I'm not sure. I think he likes Italian. Well, you guys let me know if I can help with that. Do you know how many people are going to be coming along with you guys to celebrate? Uh, probably 12. Oh, that's a great number. And we have several different vehicles to choose from. You know, this is a little personal, but how's your grandpa's mobility? Is he able to get in and out of vehicles pretty easily? Yes, he can get around as well as you and I. Oh, well, my grandpa was just the same as well. Okay, so I think the best option would be one of our new Mercedes Sprinter limos, and they're absolutely gorgeous. They're well-appointed with a built-in bar. They have the wraparound seating, so everybody can talk while they're in there. And Grandpa probably won't get into the Bluetooth stereo, but those of us that like to play our own music have that available. How does that sound for a vehicle to start with? Oh, that sounds exciting. He'll love that. And you can look at the pictures on our website. And... Typically, dinner is going to take a minimum of about four hours, depending on where we're going to be picking you guys up from. Where is the initial pickup going to be? It's going to be in Alpharetta. Also, going to meet us right within our service area. Well, Pam, let's go ahead and get some pricing together and see what we can work out. And then as we move along, if you guys need some help starting on restaurants or any of your other planning, it's always our pleasure to help with that as well. Oh, great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And guys, I'm going to end our good call here because honestly, I can sometimes spend 10 to 12 minutes taking one single reservation. So it's because I do try to take the time to get to know our client on the phone. And this is what is passed down to our reservationists. And yes, sometimes they stumble and they'll never actually handle dialogue like we do. But we have to teach them those transitional phrases and how to make that client comfortable. And remember, you never even heard me mention price yet. We're probably a minute and a half to two minutes into that call. Thank you for listening to the good call and let's move forward. Oh, fudge, Tammy. You just showed me how to make a good phone call. How do I communicate with all those other methods you mentioned? Well, you're going to do it exactly the same. Even when corresponding via email, Facebook, chat, text, etc., you're going to use the same courtesies and manners that I extended on that call that you just heard. So, and you'll see, you know, a text, I need a price. You're going to do the same thing. I'd love to help you with that. Is it a special occasion or is it an airport? My name is Tammy. What is yours? Await your response and then move forward accordingly. You know, and don't be shocked with these millennials. You may not get a response for a week or more. Likewise, don't be surprised if it becomes very rapid fire and those texts, chats, or Facebook messages end up in an ultimate booking right there and then. In the essence of time, if you have more questions about how to do this via chat, email, Facebook, or Yelp, please feel free to extend that question at the end of our webinar today. Thank you, and let's move on. So let's take a moment and recognize who my audience is today. How many attendees do I have that primarily focus on their corporate business? 
If that's what your primary focus has been, please raise your hand. Hey, there's a cute little raise your hand box over there by the dialogue. And Lexi, can you tell me what that percentage is, please? Oh, wow. It's, uh, it's a whole bunch, Tammy. Looks like we have a good number of attendees here at the Duke Corporate. I hope you'll stay tuned because I want to see each and every one of your fleet vehicles on the road and maximizing your dollars rather than collecting dust on nights and weekends. We're going to move forward to value adds. Value adds are the items that can make you very unique and cost you little or nothing. At Action, our value adds are things like red carpets, champagne or sparkling juice, birthday balloons, wedding flags, discounts for free hours on six or plus more hour charters, Bluetooth stereos, and there's quite a few more I could add. It costs you nothing to throw down some rose petals. Not one of them even adds $20 in cost to a booking. For my retail attendees, you're probably already doing some of these, so I hope I can give you a few more. Corporate, it's time to invest in a couple red carpets and some champagne buckets. Value adds must be communicated seamlessly to each potential client. Once establishing their needs and their occasion, these small things lead to your close. So remember to start asking the right question. Simon says, lower your hands. I don't need your arm up and getting tired for the rest of my presentation. You and your CSR have now established the needs or the occasion for your client. It's time to become a concierge. Our bachelorettes go from thinking they want to go bar hopping for three to four hours to being super stoked about going for a six, seven, eight hour winery tour. They have a full day of fun with their friends that we start with mimosas, bachelor parties, you know, they all want to go to the strip clubs, but we encourage them to try out our brewery tour. After the brewery tour, they go to a place like Top Golf or Andretti Speedway for some serious drunken competition. And you know what? It still usually ends up with them wanting to keep us longer, and the strip club still comes in. Here's a special slide for Celine Aslam out in San Diego with MIB. Now, doesn't this kind of charter have more appeal than just a three to four hour drunken party with a bunch of potential pukers? Not to mention, how does eight hours compare to three for your bottom line? So let's just move quickly into other special occasions. These can include sweet 16s, kids' birthdays, grandpa's birthdays, like you heard in the call, anniversaries, even just a special night out. We do a lot of proposals, um, and that's always a great amount of fun for the chauffeur. So again, you're going to help them. For Sweet 16, we often get the call from the mother who doesn't know what to do, except that their child wants to go out in the limo, and they want to ride around. Well, we try to explain to everyone that we're a destination-based limousine company, that our chauffeurs don't think of 285 as a carousel, and think of it the same way for your city. By having knowledgeable CS stars, they can guide them right through a conversation that takes that riding around conversation forward. I often suggest a fun photo shoot by ordering great little props from Oriental Trader or Dollar Tree and taking them to a local park. We're blessed in Atlanta. We have Centennial Olympic Park, but I bet you have somewhere just like that as well. And then how about dinner at a teen-friendly restaurant like Hard Rock? And if you don't have Hard Rock, teenagers like pizza and burgers no matter where you are. But I always try to go ahead and ice that cake or ice that booking with a little dessert somewhere different because there's nothing better to add time to a great charter than different locations within the booking. So that original three-hour package easily becomes five, and it works for all different charters. For husbands calling for the anniversary, tell them, oh, we can put rose petals in the car. Let them know that they can start with dinner at a great place, followed by somewhere else for dessert or cocktails. And, you know, remember, again, we mentioned asking the right questions. What's your wife's favorite food? help them along and build that rapport because once you've done this they'll not go anywhere even if they have to call you back you know that's when you upsell and there's so many things we do that don't cost any money and i don't charge for them if they're asking for a specified champagne wine a particular chocolate then we do allow that to come into a package but we just charge double what the cost of the product is 
um, again, that can be used for any occasion. You roll out the red carpet. You can have their favorite color napkins on board. You can just play that right along. Um, same thing with those 80th birthdays. How's their mobility? You know, once you get those questions down, they know you're a company that cares. So we're going to move on forward to prom season next. Let me get up that slide. Yay! 10 hundred million phone calls an hour with teenagers calling about their prom this year. Well, I mean, you know, the phone calls are just a necessary evil of all the income we make during prom season. And if you're like us, we can't keep up with the supply versus the demand. So we do raise our prices and have some really sweet six hour packages. We normally base those at about $100 a Heine in each car. So that goes for sedans all the way up to the stretch SUVs. <laughs> Everything except for the limo, the small limo bus. Um, you guys, we can debate my ethics on raising those prices later because I've heard both sides of that. But I can tell you it's a contributing factor to how we've had such a great profit margin and doubled our fleet. Um, immediately establish who you're on the call with or who you're chatting with or tweeting with or Facebooking with so that you know who your audience is. Again, it can be the parent or the teenager. So for the teenagers, you're going to sell your sizzle. You're going to let them know that you roll out the red carpet, that your stereos all have Bluetooth to choose their own music, that the limo has beautiful lights, and that you're going to have the bar iced down with sodas and bottled water and offer them complimentary sparkling juice for toasting. Um, there are so many things you can do to get a teen excited. And then one of the things we throw in here for prom is that if they refer another classmate for the same night, they earn a free hour. So about that time is when we go into pricing and we do a hundred dollar credit card deposit to hold it. We give them 10 days to mail in check or cash um, for the rest of the deposit and the balance is due 10 days pr prior. Well, let's talk about those parents that call. Moms and dads love all the bling bling and the sizzle too, but they like to hear that your chauffeurs double as chaperones that all of them are over 30, if you can say that and be honest, and that most have kids or grandkids of their own. That our chauffeurs get them safely to and from the prom and provide all of their beverages. We personally don't allow any outside food or drinks and no large purses, no duffel bags, and hopefully no way for them to sneak it in. We provide a minor's policy and procedures to the parents to go over with their teens prior to the event. But when it comes to making a parent comfortable, that's how you score. <laughs> so let's talk about my sweet spot. We master weddings. I can honestly say that behind prom, weddings can be the most profitable retail business that you can ever master. Yeah. I think you'll agree that a bride calling an Uber or a Lyft or even an autonomous vehicle is so far in the future. For my corporate attendees, this is your golden tips. Our wedding transfer packages begin at $205 for just a sedan. Yeah, we include a red carpet, wedding flags, champagne, and or sparkling juice. But keep in mind, this is for our metro area only, and we never discuss time. These bookings can be as short as five minutes point to point from downtown to a local hotel, or they can be 45 minutes and, you know, go to their home. Either way, it's the same because there's so much profit in that 205. We really don't care. We give them a 15 minute grace, but our chauffeurs, of course, allow 30 because brides are never, 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 never on time. But don't tell them or that will just make you lose your booking. Um, price accordingly, whether it's your SUV, your premium sedans, even your Mercedes and BMW. I think that there are nights that you can honestly afford to give a $500 point to point transfer in that Mercedes S550 rather than leaving it in the garage. So I'm going to skip right past the limos for a minute and talk another sweet spot for you corporate guys out there because if you have minis or motor coaches, this is a high ticket item for weddings. A lot of people want to just transfer their guests from their hotels to their venues in return. 
If anyone is turning away a wedding because they only offer corporate, then you are absolutely missing the boat. I can exceed that goal I set for you early so fast it'll make your head spin. Daddy still spend thousands of dollars for his little girl to have everything she wants on her special day. And the couples that are getting married later in life, they spend their money here on their guests and often not on themselves. I've booked two mini coaches for a 30 something wedding and never booked a limo for them. So I started at six hours and I worked my way up. It just depended on what they needed. You have to ask the right questions. Find out where their um, route is gonna take them. Do you have the correct equipment? Is it gonna be in the day or the evening? You just wanna make this part seamless by them, for them by asking exactly what you need to and reminding them of time for loading and unloading. Before we purchased our Gretsch, I called a local affiliate. I needed to transfer about 100 guests, just one and a half miles, in a mini coach from 5 p.m. until 1 a.m. They let me go no further and just stated, I don't do weddings. Well, that Gretsch payment is a whole lot easier for us to make with just a few of these gigs on weekends. And it doesn't even affect my weekly corporate work. Let's talk limo style. This is the time when you make your specialty vehicles shine. Whether it's from a regular sedan because you've already recognized this client's on a budget to your biggest party bus or largest limo style vehicle in your fleet. For example, we just ordered our first trolley. So we're really excited to be incorporating that into the fleet. All those little extras count the most here, like the red carpet, your champagne toast on a departure, the time they can bond before and after their wedding. You're going to assist in the mapping and timing so that they get there seamlessly and that you're the best unseen part of their amazing day. Remember, your competitors aren't doing this. They're not taking time to build a reputation, a reputation, let me say a rapport with that client, and this is how it becomes your gold mine. Because once you finish assisting with the reason for their call, which is the wedding, you have the million dollar question. What do you have planned for your upcoming bachelor and bachelorette's parties? Um, again, if time is far enough out, here's your half a million dollar question. You just determined they have 300 people coming to this wedding. How are your guests going to get to and from the airport? We'd be happy to create you a custom portal for your special day or, in, or give them a discount code, whatever your software allows that helps you to capitalize. And you just say, hey guys, post that up on your knot. I can send you a link. And all of the brides and grooms are using the knot these days. If you're not, check it out. Um, just consider the possibilities. You've gone from booking one transfer, charter, or run to potentially booking over 100 airport transfers as well as their bachelor and bachelorette. So that is honestly the icing is weddings. My last golden tip is if they do not book with you right then, make sure your CSR says, Susan, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. Do you mind if I give you a call back in a couple of days to see if you have any other questions? You don't ask them if you can call back to book them. You ask if you can call back with another question. Here's an interesting fact as we move forward to the next slide. So to keep going. Hey, Lexi, go on up one more slide, honey. Apologies, everyone, we're catching up. And here's that interesting fact while we go right into the next slide. Okay, well, so far I've shared about making the great first impression, all your value adds, some key transitional phrases, and the million dollar and half a million dollar questions. You have answers for a lot, but you know what? I guess we need to talk about how you're going to get them to your website or how you're going to get them to call you. And the key to that is all about inbound marketing.
imagination's on. Hey, fly. Bill, who invited you? Oh, no, guys, I'm just doing this for a bit of fun because I know the minute I say the key to traffic is inbound marketing, he was going to pop up in your mind anyway. And, you know, Bill does a phenomenal job, and I'm also a member of Limo U, so maybe even some of the ideas I'm sharing came from one of those sessions. But either way, we need to remember that inbound marketing is a concept, not just a company. Inbound marketing is any effort that drives traffic and sales to your business. I'm going to repeat this because it's so important, and that is inbound marketing is any effort that drives traffic and sales to your business. So let's talk website. Is your website user friendly? Is it very transparent? Is it easy for any potential client that lands there to reach out to you with their preferred means of communication? Remember we talked about how the millennials don't want to talk no more? So have a chat accessibility feature. Make sure they can call or text you on your main office line. And even make it easy if they're a Facebook person and they see that icon for them to Facebook or tweet you. You have to appeal to every audience. When they click around, are they seeing a little bit of pricing at least? Are your pictures your actual photos? If you don't have your actual vehicles on your fleet, invest in a photographer or get a camera and do some great pictures yourself. In addition to your website being optimized with the most SEO that you can afford or find, do you have a strong Facebook presence? You know, Facebook is important both personally and professionally. Don't think that your clients aren't clicking over to your personal Facebook when they see you comment on your professional page to see who you are. Don't let the person they see there influence their decision to not do business with you. Nobody wants to see you mooning your neighbor. So as we move on, are you using Yelp to your advantage? And whether you want to tweet or not, you must. You know our president does it, and whether you love or hate him, it sure is effective. Instagram is all the rage, and LinkedIn is one of your most valuable tools. Oh, no. Well, guys, I almost forgot something very critical, and it's only thanks to Ryan Hilberth and a little chat we were having last week that I remembered or was reminded by him that organically, I am also a master at meeting new clients and getting the word out of our business in some of the most unique and free ways. Well, other than sometimes some dues to join a certain association. Hey, before I go further though, Ryan Hilberth, happy birthday, and thank you for reminding me how well we do here. So I guess you can touch hundreds or thousands of people if you have your chauffeurs, all of your office staff, and yourselves constantly working for you. Some of you may have even seen on Facebook this week that I'm away, and I was able to mention and talk about my friends in the industry. I've met people from Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and even Detroit. And so it's great to share with them what we do. And I do this every day, no matter where I'm at, no matter who I see, and no matter where I go. Because what you want to do is create raving fans. And if your chauffeurs and your office staff are not raving fans, then you need to find out what you're doing wrong because you want them doing the same thing everywhere they go. So to narrow this down a little bit for you, some of the local associations that we're members of is our Chamber of Commerce. Of course, our convention and visitors bureaus. I have just gotten involved with Meeting Planners International and am absolutely so excited. You know, you can put someone in your office in Toastmasters and just pay that for them, and it also gives them the chance to be your cheerleader there. You know, we're a member of our local country club and even our state's restaurant association. You know, I think you guys may have some questions about some of these and why I feel they're beneficial. Um, and hopefully nobody's listening from Atlanta because I don't want you to join the Georgia Restaurant Association. <laughs> but bottom line is there are so many creative ideas you can do organically to grow your business as well that I wanted you to keep those in mind. Now, before I reveal your free gift, I need you to understand that everyone is not your client. Again, everyone is not your client.
So we have to talk about something negative that can affect your bottom line because this whole webinar is about being positive. And while this could be another webinar in itself, I'm going to very quickly touch on three things that will allow you to know when it's time to stop selling on a call. And yes, I mean that stop selling because you don't want the bad clients. These last three items can save you money and save your reputation in the long run. Number one, the conversation becomes too price based. Number two, they realize that possibly your service isn't what they want and you definitely have already realized you don't want them as your client. Number three, they begin or at any time during the text, chat, whatever, asking exact make, model, year, age, or color of your chauffeurs, and or if every light inside that limo works. You know, it's nice to refer these individuals to your competitor and no longer have availability. Let them nickel and dime them to death. Let them find reasons to get a discount from them after they use three or four or five hours of service or charge them back. Most of all, let them go trash their limos. If you're building your business smartly, you don't need these people. They can really wreck your bottom line and threaten your reputation. Well, I'm going to be sticking around for a little bit um, for all your immediate questions. So let's talk about that free gift. Well, it's about time for us to wrap this up because I value your time and know that it's important to each of us. And just as I want to value your time, I want to talk about your free gift. Your free gift is actually going to be my time. And so what I need you to do is just please send us an email to engage at atl.limo with your company name, your target market area, the best number to reach you on. Also, any goals or ideas that will give me the opportunity to pre-research and to be ready for our call. So 15 minutes of my time is going to be your free gift. And we'll leave this email address up on the screen here at the end during the question and answer session. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with the remainder of our closing. Let me queue up the next slide. Thank you guys for letting me be your guinea pig for our first LCT webinar. Um, we're going to stick around for all your questions, and after we finish today, you are going to receive a survey. Um, the survey is going to ask for your feedback on how well or how bad I did. I welcome either because there's always room for people to improve. And more importantly, we're going to ask you for topics for future webinars. We want to give you guys a lot of value um, from these webinars each month, so please take a minute and fill those out. I need to do a special thank you to Kevin Mullane at Silver Oak for being my bad call. Um, he did answer with his own company name and he was a really good sport and I can assure you Kevin does not answer his calls like that. I want to apologize on the good call that the beginning of it got cut off a little bit, but it is hard to pre-plan these and make sure that they work perfectly. We also want to apologize for any other technical difficulties in advance because this was our first webinar. Hey, shout out to all of you guys in Minneapolis. I am wishing you all the love and best of luck with the Super Bowl. Uh, it's coming to Atlanta next year, and yes, I'm a little nervous, but Kevin Mullane and I have already teamed up, and so you will have a great team in Atlanta along with our other operators to work with here in our city. Well, Lexi, let's go on to that first question. All right, Tammy. I'm going to go ahead and put your contact information up in case anybody needs to contact you uh, if we don't get to any of the questions here today. Um, let's go ahead and start with our first question which is from Lori. She asks, can we get a list of value add-ons? Sure, I'll be happy to do that. Um, let me make a note real quick. And um, value add-ons to us are those things like the red carpet, the champagne buckets for the toast. Um, I don't know if Lori's referring to like everything we do. I mean, we do free, we do rose petals a lot of times for weddings and we get those at Dollar Tree. So what I'll do is I will get a list put together from what we spoke about and then anything else we may do like the free birthday balloons um, together and then I will um, email it over if she'll just send me a quick email. Sure thing. All right, our next question is from Tony. He asks, does your website indicate anywhere that customers can text? 
Um, I don't know that it does actually. I was thinking about what, that when I published that screen. It does come through on all of their confirmation emails now. We've been trying to get the word out about ZipWhip. So um, thank you, Tony, because that was something that was on our minds as to how we were going to incorporate that. And I was going to talk to my web guy and say, you can text to our main line, but I just don't know where to put it in there and still keep, if you put too much, I guess Tony will agree, it gets a little unprofessional, but I might be able to put a dialog box that goes in below where the chat box is that says chat with us and or text us. So Excellent. it doesn't specify. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Our next question is from Jessica. She asks, how did you build SEO? The hardest question ever, Jess. Well, okay. So we started by getting a great web designer and we use EFX, Michael Elwanger down in Florida. And Michael's the one that really helped steer us in the right direction. So most of the time what we did was we invested a ton of money there. I think we probably got several over a hundred thousand dollars in our website and we have a tremendous amount of landing pages. Landing pages are additional pages that drive your SEO. They will have all of their own contact content or information. So for example, if there's a big concert coming up like Garth Brooks, we did a Garth Brooks page. Um, the championship games, the Super Bowl coming up next year, we're going to be building pages. So everybody that goes online to search, we're going to be the first choice that comes up. Um, weddings, every single occasion. We also have done it with different locations, um, but building landing pages with nice, honest, unique content is what will drive your SEO. And you don't have to start huge. You can start a few at a time. I think we started with 10 extra landing pages per month and we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 landing pages now. Excellent. So we have another question from Jose. Uh, he asks, uh, do you have any suggestions for a web chat service? I have come across a few, but very user unfriendly to program. Jose, great question. Ours is with Hudson um, and it has worked very well. So if your software provider doesn't provide that, Jose, I will be happy to go ahead and look that up for you. Just go ahead and shoot that email over and let me see what kind of research I can do to get that information. But ours is provided through Hudson, who is currently our software provider. So I'm not familiar with other ones and that one is just one that they programmed right in for me. Excellent. We have another question from Jessica. She asks, what is the average you spend on marketing each month? Well, if I count my web guy and my Facebook ads are boost and what else? A little bit less than a thousand dollars a month. So probably between eight hundred and fifty and nine fifty. But this comes late in life. You have to remember I built all those pages first. And so on a monthly basis, our average marketing spend isn't that much, Jess. Excellent. Do we have any other questions from the audience? We still have a little bit of time left if anyone wants to ask a few. Well, I hope you guys will take some time to think of what you'd like to see in future webinars. And Lex, just because I recognize that some of the audio wasn't great due to background noise, I could hear some wind. Um, every once in a while, those chuckles came in at the right time. But I <laughs> So that um, what we determined was that by pre-recording, we didn't have quite the chance of me messing up in the middle and those kind of things. So I hope that the content was good. And next time I would encourage being in this, maybe a closet. <laughs> when you do your <laughs> uh, oh, we have a couple more questions. Uh, one from Abigail. She asks, what percentage of your profits is that marketing cost? What percentage of profits is that marketing cost um are you asking if you feel as though i make more money with the add-ons and the value adds and the things we talked about versus what i actually spend because i could honestly say what i if i can get one call that originally calls for that three-hour bachelorette party for example and i turn them into a seven or eight hour winery tour I, that nine fifty a month is a wash. I mean, honestly, it doesn't take much to cover that. Just once you learn those key phrases and how to help your client discover what their needs really are. I think I said something to the effect of you don't know what you don't know, or I put it in one of my slides, and that's true. 
And so being that truly caring company that is trying to find out the needs makes any amount of dollars you spend a wash. You just have to, you know, I don't believe in Google ad clicks. When Clarence and I first started dating, he was spending a tremendous amount on Google clicks and the Google ads. If you can afford it, that's great. But you can also redirect those monies into the SEO and the landing pages. So Abigail, if I need to be more clear on that, or if you want to talk about that, of course, please shoot over the email with those questions in it so that I make sure I'm addressing what your question actually was. Our next question is from Anthony. He asks, how do you know when it's the right time to expand your fleet? When you start sending out more business to your affiliates than a payment would cost. So for example, we didn't buy our Gretsch until I was doing at least 10 to 14,000 a month in mini coach work outside of our house. So that's actually three to four times what the payment is. And so that's when we bought the Gretsch. Um, you'll notice on your sedans when it's time. And I will share with you guys when it comes to buying specialties like my MKTs, you know, we've been upgrading the fleet, but not getting rid of our traditionals because they still book so much. Um, we kind of watch out for the deals. Um, hope none of my builders are on here. I did buy my Gretsch new, but a lot of times and I've bought my Sprinters new, we'll look for the deals. I mean, there are always going to be somebody who hasn't marketed correctly who went out and bought a brand new vehicle and they've only put 20 thirty thousand miles on it and then that vehicle becomes something that you can afford to buy without having the fear of not being able to make the payment i hope that helps anthony uh, our next question is how do you encourage repeat return clients as opposed to one-off retail clients you know, we have a loyalty program for our corporate and we do 80% of our business is corporate. 20% is retail. 80% of our income is retail and 20% of our income is corporate, as crazy as that sounds. So I often find that during the course of those conversations for special occasions, they can often turn into a corporate client. So then they become a regular client. And even your retail, we do try to follow up with them. We're getting a better practice there, whereas we're going to actually try to make sure that if it was a wedding, we remember when to send them an anniversary card. If it was a birthday, we know when to encourage, you know, sending them a birthday card. Sometimes hard to ask people those questions. Um, so hopefully that will help us to encourage repeat business. And then I've done prompts where five years later, the young man called me back to do his wedding and said he wouldn't think of using anybody else. And so a lot of that repeat business is going to be how you handle the call and trying to make sure that you continue to reach out to them, whether it's in an email newsletter or something every couple of months to get your name and your face back in front of them. Excellent. Okay. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Yes, we do. Uh, one from Don. If you send a quote to a potential client, how many times should you follow up? I follow up once and I do it about 72 hours later. Um, I guess it would be okay to follow up again and again if they're asking for a quote for six months out. Um, you guys raise your hands, but do you ever get that crazy call where they want a quote for next September and it's like August of this year? I mean, those kind of calls are just crazy. So in my quotes, the other thing I do is say that my quote's only good for 72 hours, for example, or up to seven days, um, and hope that encourages them to go ahead and book. So does that answer that question for you? I follow up, but I don't follow up over and over on a quote. But I do put a time limit in the quote to encourage them to go ahead and book the vehicle. Excellent. And Dawn says, thank you very much for your answer. Uh, we have another one from Abigail. She asks, which of your vehicles is the most popular and booked the most? Well, that's an easy one. It's our Stretch Hummer, and I'm just pained that they don't make those anymore. In fact, that vehicle books so much, I just raised the price back up to $165 an hour, and I don't let it go out for three hours anymore. It has to be a four-hour minimum to try to keep the wear and tear down on it while I keep the profit up. Um, just to go down the line from there. The second is probably going to be those traditional Lincoln stretches. That's still everybody's idea of a 
limousine and until the bachelor quits showing them on their show i'm going to keep running them um after that it would be those mkts because we did end up with two five door white mkts those go out all the time the brides love them along with the sprinters but the one vehicle that pains me in our fleet that doesn't go out enough is my MV1. That's the accessible limousine I brought for um, our brides, our prom kids that were in wheelchairs. And when it goes out a lot more during prom this, than it used to because the special needs teachers have found out about it. We've marketed that directly to the schools. But I wish that that vehicle went out more, but I'm not gonna let it go anywhere so I never have to cry and say no to a bride for as long as I have to. We still have a little bit more time for questions if anyone was uh, waiting on one. <laughs> well, if nobody else has questions, Lexi, I've got a beach and a swimming pool calling me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I have one. Uh, uh -huh. One from Matthew. How do you train CSRs to upsell and take ownership of the sales process or instill the ownership mentality you have? My CSRs are on a draw against a guaranteed draw against commission. So you have to get them to take ownership by giving them some kind of extra incentive to spend the time on the phone and not just jump to the next call, I think. So you have to look at that, Matthew, from your organizational standpoint. Um, is there a feasible way to bonus them on particular bookings? Does that make, I hope that makes sense. And we could certainly talk about that at length and I could share more of our structure with you. Right now, um, my CSRs are close to making their guaranteed draw, meaning that they're paid really well, in my opinion. Um, but I would like to see more of that. When it comes to actual bookings, Pam is the master and she's the, also the one that sits and trains them and then the other way we do this is we don't allow our phones to go to voicemail unless it's an absolute necessity we always answer live so we let them know you don't have to cut someone short to get that next line let it roll to whoever's doing your backup any more questions Still got about 15 minutes if uh, we want to stretch it out to noon. Or till three. Hey guys, just don't hesitate to send me that email and make sure you put that information in there because I would like to have the time to research and look at your company so I can give you specific because I really want everybody to be successful. And when I say that, I mean it. Um, I was kidding a little bit about sending those particular clients to the competition. <laughs> I'll know who I'm talking about and I didn't elaborate much there, but you'll get that color that all of a sudden goes, well, what brand is the stereo in your car and what kind of sodas are you going to provide and what type of water do you use? Those clients are going to come back and ask for a discount or come up with some reason to get money back when they're that picky. So when I say that bad clients can kill your bottom line, please keep that in mind when you're on the phone. And like I said, I just stopped selling. I'm like, oh, well, at that point, I actually do what, you know, I told Kevin, you know, to do on the bad call, jump right to date and time. And then suddenly I have no availability. Uh, oh, we have another question from James. How do you use those organic leads? How do I use the organic leads? I don't really have to use them, James. If I'm at a restaurant or at one of those meetings, I'm just constantly talking and getting to know those people. And then I go into what I do for a living and, you know, how we can help them. Everybody you meet is going to have a birthday sometime this year. Um, they may not have an anniversary. They could be forever single, but everybody has special occasions. And so at, for example, the Henry County Chamber meeting, I go around and I make sure I introduce myself to as many people as I've never met before. And then, of course, I strengthen the relationships with the people I already know. And same thing with each one. The um, Georgia Restaurant Association, I mentioned, I hope nobody was on here from Atlanta. But it's funny because I go to restaurants now and I apologize. I'm getting some backlash from my microphone here. Um, I go to restaurants and the owners come out to see me. It's just so cool. Um, no, I don't get a lot of free stuff. But organic leads are those things that you're generating just by being you and being proud of your business and talking about it and, you know, everywhere you go. I mean, we go to restaurants early and have drinks on purpose just to talk to other people at the high end restaurants and bars because they have money. 
if they're at chops, they're fixing to spend $150 on dinner, just like me. So I know they can afford our service. And so we try really hard to make ourselves do that at least once a week or twice a week and sometimes more. But even here at the resort, I just start talking to people and it just leads into, oh, you're in Detroit. I think I may have gotten Julie um, a great chauffeur when she get, when I get back because I've got all of his information for her. So always soft sell everywhere you go. It's all I can say. Constantly be soft selling. If you're proud of what you do, there's no reason not to share it. Looks like we've got time for about one or two more questions if uh, anyone's still thinking about a question. Or if we're all good, I think we can go ahead and wrap things up here. No well, objections. Well, thank you everybody for being here and I look forward to seeing everybody at LCT. Um, we only have a couple months, so if you haven't already registered, Early Bird is open and I'll look for those emails and engage. We'll be sending out an invitation with a Calendly, I think that's how I said, um, where you get to choose your date and time. So I'm going to pick like three days a week until I get everybody done. Um, over the next two weeks, but I would love to take the time to help you in any way I can and to give you that gift of my time. And Lexi, thank you. I'm so glad we were able to do this without too many difficulties. As am I. And uh, I also want to thank everybody who showed up to uh, today's very first LCT webinar. Um, and I'll, I also want to mention that it'll be available on demand on the LCT website under the More tab, where you'll find a link to the video portion of our site. Um, you're also going to receive a survey uh, after you go ahead and click out of everything. I would really, really appreciate that feedback, and I know Tammy would as well. So if you could just take maybe five minutes of your day to fill that out, it would be much appreciated. All right. Well, I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much for attending. Bye-bye, everybody.